predator, Dimetrodon. No ordinary reptile, but the first of a whole new line of proto mammals. Reptiles have one kind of teeth, uniformly throughout their mouth, but not Dimetrodon. Its name means two types of teeth, and that's exactly what we find in its mouth. An interesting point of resemblance between us and Dimetrodon is the dentition, the teeth. Dimetrodon has simple incisors, followed by a specialized canine and a series of teeth of different sizes that are specialized behind the canine. This feature is not something that we find very commonly distributed throughout the animal kingdom. In fact, it's really only found in one other group, in mammals. Mammals, like Dimetrodon, have a dentition that's made up of simple, specialized incisors, a canine, of course, our canine's pretty small, but it's still a canine. And behind the canine are a series of specialized, differentiated teeth of different sizes that perform different functions than the teeth in the front of the jaw. This feature links us with Dimetrodon, like it or not. You could pick your friends, but you can't pick your relatives. With the development of specialized teeth, Dimetrodon was one step closer toward becoming a mammal. 360 million years ago, before Dimetrodon, the first creatures crawled out of the ocean and invaded the lush, marshy land at the edges of the continents. These simple four-legged creatures, early amphibians, began spreading over the Earth. Within 20 million years, they diversified, giving rise to the earliest reptiles. But the early reptiles soon reached a momentous fork in the evolutionary river. They split into two groups, and these two different designs began to compete for supremacy. From generation to generation, over millions of years, each line improved and perfected its design. The only difference between them was a simple hole in the head. But this seemingly trivial detail made all the difference in the world. Most of the early reptiles developed into a line known as the diapsids, which means they had two openings in the back of their skulls. Over the course of millions of years, the diapsids evolved into dinosaurs, lizards, crocodiles, and all modern reptiles. This is a crocodilian, and this is a diapsid. Here's the hole where the eyeball would set, and behind it, on either side, are two openings through which the jaw muscles can expand without squeezing the brain. So this animal closes its jaws, the muscles can expand upwards and outwards here instead of squeezing the brain. This ultimately enabled this lineage to evolve a larger brain and a more powerful bite, a smarter, better predator. But Dimetrodon's line chose to follow a different path. For reasons that aren't entirely clear, these early reptiles developed only a single hole in the back of their skulls. We call this group synapsids. All proto-mammals were synapsids, including Dimetrodon. From this line, cows, dogs, humans, and all other mammals evolved. This is one of our extinct relatives, and it's a synapsid. Here's the hole where the eyeball would sit, and this opening back here is the synapsid opening. This is for the jaw muscles to expand outwards. If you turn the skull over, it's a little more clear what I mean by that. Here and here are where the right and left jaw muscles set, and squeezed between them is the brain. When this animal closes its lower jaws, it would squeeze the brain if there weren't some room on the side of its head for the jaw muscles to expand outwards. Being a synapsid has to do with developing a stronger bite to per permit larger jaw muscles to evolve, and at the same time to permit a larger brain to evolve. This is a human skull, and this skull shows to which group we belong. Here's the opening where the eyeball would sit, and behind it is a single opening. This is a synapsid. The synapsid condition allows for the jaw muscles to expand sideways here without squeezing the brain between them. This permits us to have a much larger brain without compromising the effectiveness of our bite. One extra little hole in the skull made such a big difference in the development of the proto-mammals. Over millions of years, this innovation led these creatures to develop mechanisms for more sophisticated hearing and sharper senses. This new skull design spurred the evolution of the three-boned inner ear, superior to the reptile's single ear bone. So, for example, in this jaw of Dimetrodon, 
there's a little flange of bone here that was involved in uh, sound reception. And this flange of bone represents a significant step towards the origin of mammals. This three bone design remains in mammals today. Better hearing and a better sense of smell made these creatures better hunters. The world quickly became a scarier place. To attack or run requires speed and endurance, and the proto-mammals adapted to survive. The arms race of the predators became more of a leg race. From the ancestors of Ophiacodon, 340 million years ago, to Dimetrodon, 280 million years ago, we see the legs begin to shift from the sides further under their bodies. By the time the saber-toothed Dinostrancevia Alexandri terrorized the swamp forests of ancient Russia 245 million years ago, proto-mammals had clearly made the transition from reptilian to mammal-like posture. Their metabolism, too, may have become truly warm-blooded. With a faster gait, the mammal-like reptiles took possession of the land masses. No simple reptile could stand up to these formidable predators. For 50 million years, they dominated and terrorized the planet. At the same time, evolution took a branch of proto-mammals on a wild detour, producing aggressive animals known as headbutters. Many species evolved strange horn-like growths and thick skulls. Some, like Estemenosuchus, resembled the modern moose. Others, with knobs and bumps covering their faces, could only be compared to monsters of the imagination. These thick and strange skulls developed because butting heads became part of their mating rituals. It was a strange way of showing their mates just how hot-blooded they had become. Long before the hot-blooded headbutters, Dimetrodon may have used his sail as a sexual lure or a signal to rivals, perhaps by changing its color. Dimetrodon was a cold-blooded critter, gotta understand. Its immediate descendants were the first hotbloods. They included the first headbutters, animals with huge bony crests around their eyes, for whacking and thwacking each other. Now think about that. When hot-bloodedness evolves, suddenly you have a lot of energy. You, the individual critter, what are you gonna use that energy for? Well, you can keep yourself warm and you can migrate, but in the breeding season, you can use that energy for whacking and thwacking and pushing and shoving and, and ramming your sexual rival right in the guts. So it actually makes a lot of sense that physical combat in courtship would evolve right after warm-bloodedness first evolved. The walrus-like Lystrosaurus typifies one of the later headbutters. The skull is thick and nearly flat. Millions of years of headbutting behavior produced this strange creature with a turtle-like beak squashed against a flattened face. Mammal-like reptiles grew and flourished. They had taken important steps from reptilian to mammalian form. They had struggled up the evolutionary ladder, but then suddenly and inexplicably, the dinosaurs took control. The proto-mammals began to disappear. Despite the great evolutionary strides made by the proto-mammals, something went terribly wrong. At the beginning of the Triassic period, 245 million years ago, the highly developed and greatly diversified proto-mammals began to die off in record numbers. The larger they were, the more vulnerable. And at the same time, the first little dinosaur... 